use of sounds as vehicles to elevate the human soul and bring it closer to the divinity is a constant in all the cultures of our planet. The chants help achieve another level of consciousness, evoke the other world, and seem to bring closer the distant murmur of the souls of the dead. Sounds which we hear from when we are children and which form part of the collective memories of peoples. In this village in the north of Laos, the dancers are to ask for a good rice harvest and a short dry season. In reality, no one knows exactly why we humans relate music to ritual and ceremonial concepts, but it is without a doubt a transcultural phenomenon. In Rio de Janeiro, the Macumba ceremonies, a mixture of ancestral African rites and Christianity, are an extreme example in which participants go into a trance amidst an atmosphere saturated with sounds, without which the act could not take place. The rhythm gradually takes over the participants until one of them connects with the spirits and is possessed by them. The fact is, sounds unite the members of a community, be it religious or of birds. And though at first sight there would appear to be no relation, in both cases the acoustic link is an expression of union, of group identity. For the sulfur crested cockatoos, as with almost all social birds, the constant chattering maintains cohesion among the flock. It means I am here and is vital for them. In these large groups, each individual sends out his contact call approximately once a minute, and they're all capable of recognizing the voice of each other. Birds in general have good hearing, and therefore it is logical that they also have developed their vocal faculties and use them on many different occasions. One of the most frequent is the sexual call. Here on the coasts of Ecuador, these blue-footed boobies emit their characteristic whistles when the breeding season begins. But it is in southern Spain that we find a species for which sound is a question of life and death. Since before dawn, adult flamingos have been arriving at this lagoon in Andalusia. They have spent almost the whole night flying, having traveled 300 kilometers to get food for their children. But when they arrive, the problems begin because each adult must find his own chick in the middle of a starving, clamoring horde of young flamingos. How do they do it? They simply recognize the sound of its voice and are capable of distinguishing the cries of their child from all others, even though there are thousands of them. For a chick, it's no problem being fed by someone who is not his father. But for an adult, it would be a disaster to feed someone else's chick while your own dies of hunger. So it's impossible to deceive the adults despite the fact that the chicks ask all of them regardless. 
They go around the colony in search of the special tone of voice of their child. Some chicks are incredibly insistent, demanding food from any adult that comes near, persecuting and harassing them, at times even forcing them to resort to violence. But the determined parent will not give even a morsel of the food in its pouch to any chick but its own. Thank <laughs> you. 